Please stand. Again, our order of service is on page 203 in your hymnal. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise, and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar. Let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father seeking his grace for the sake of Christ, and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our service continues now as we read the introit responsively. The introit is printed out for you on the insert in your bulletin. Our introit comes from Psalm 28. We read it again responsively. The Lord is the strength of his people. He is the of his to you, O Lord, I call. My rock, be not deaf to me. Thus, if you be silent to me, I become like those who go down to the Hear the voice of my pleas for mercy when I cry to you for help. And when I lift up my hands toward your most holy sanctuary. Blessed be the Lord. For he has heard the voice of my pleas for mercy. The Lord is my strength and my shield. In him my heart trusts, and I am helped. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord is the strength of his people. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O Lord, let your merciful ears be open to the prayers of your humble servants and grant that, they, that what they ask may be in accord with your gracious will. 
Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. The Old Testament reading for the 15th Sunday after Pentecost is from Isaiah chapter 35. Say to those who have an anxious heart, be strong, fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance, with the recompense of God. He will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then shall the lame man leap like a deer and the tongue of the mute sing for joy. For waters break forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. The burning sand shall become a pool and the thirsty ground springs of water. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is from James chapter 2. My brothers, show no partiality as you hold the faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory. For if a man wearing a gold ring and fine clothing comes into your assembly, and a poor man in shabby clothing also comes in, and if you pay attention to the one who wears the fine clothing and say, you sit here in a good place, while you say to the poor man, you stand over there, or sit down at my feet, have you not then made distinctions among yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts? Listen. My beloved brothers, has not God chosen those who are poor in the world to be rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom, which he has promised to those who love him? But you have dishonored the poor man. Are not the rich the ones who oppress you and the ones who drag you into court? Are not the ones who blaspheme the honorable name by which you are called? If you really fulfill the royal law according to the scripture, You shall love your neighbor as yourself. You are doing well. But if you show partiality, you are committing sin and are convicted by the law as transgressors. For whoever keeps the whole law but fails in one point has become accountable for all of it. What good is it, my brothers, if someone says he has faith but does not have works? Can that faith save him? If a brother or sister is poorly clothed and lacking in daily food, and one of you says to them, go in peace, be warmed and filled, without giving them the things needed for the body, what good is that? So also faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. But someone will say, you have faith and I have works. Show me your faith apart from your works, and I will show you my faith by my works." This is the word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the seventh chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus returned from the region of Tyre and went through Sidon to the Sea of Galilee in the region of the Decapolis. And they brought to him a man who was deaf and had a speech impediment. And they begged him to lay his hand on him. And taking him aside from the crowd privately, he put his fingers into his ears and after spitting, touched his tongue. And looking up to heaven, he sighed and said to him, Ephatha, that is, be opened. And his ears were opened, his tongue was released, and he spoke plainly. And Jesus charged them to tell no one. But the more he charged them, the more zealously they proclaimed it. And they were astonished beyond measure, saying, He has done all things well. He even makes the deaf hear and the mute speak. This is the gospel of the Lord. We continue now with, as we make confession of our Christian faith, 
through the words of the Nicene Creed on page 206. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Our service continues with hymn number 797. Please be seated.
Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text is taken from our gospel reading, the gospel according to St. Mark, chapter 7, verses 31 through 37. Please be seated. Dear fellow redeemed in Christ, one day a little boy opened the big family Bible and he was looking at each page with fascination. As he turned the page, suddenly something fell out of that Bible. He picked it up and looked at it closely. It was an old leaf from a tree that had been pressed between the pages. Mama, look what I found, he said. What have you got there? The mother replied. Completely amazed, the boy answered, I think it's Adam's suit. (laughs) Get it? Adam's suit. Adam and Eve. Have you ever been amazed at something? From time to time, I'm able to catch the TV show Penn and Teller Fool Us. I don't know if any of you have seen that. Master illusionists, Penn and Teller, invite other amateur illusionists to their theater in Las Vegas to perform in front of a live audience. The goal is to fool two of the best illusionists in the business. In one of the more memorable episodes, a young man takes a Rubik's Cube that has been all mixed up, and he takes it and he tosses it behind his back in the air with one hand, and he catches it. And when he catches it, he shows it to the camera, and the Rubik's Cube is completely solved. Amazing. And oh, by the way, he did fool Penn and Teller. Yet as amazing as that trick was, it does not compare to what our Lord does in our text for today. You see, what Jesus does is not a sleight of hand, nor is it an illusion. Rather, what Jesus does is real. Absolutely, positively real. Our text begins with Jesus and his disciples in the region of the Decapolis, a Greek name for ten cities. These cities on the east-southeast coast of the Sea of Galilee were highly influenced by Greek culture, and they were populated mainly by Gentiles. Jesus had been in this area at least once before, and obviously his reputation preceded him. Here we read some people brought to him a man who was deaf and had a speech impediment, and they begged him to lay his hand on him. Now what Jesus does next is truly, truly amazing. Our text says that Jesus pulls the man aside to a private place and then puts his fingers in the man's ears And after spitting, touches his tongue and looking up to heaven, he sighed and said, Ephatha, that is, be open. First and foremost, what's most amazing is how Jesus is so personal in this reading. He is not some God who is far away from his creation. Nor does he create things and then let it go on its own. No, Jesus is very, very hands-on. He is active and he is involved in the lives of individuals. The second thing is that Jesus looks up to heaven. He acknowledges his heavenly Father for the giver of all good things giving him the glory. Now, after doing these things, our text says, the man's ears were opened, his tongue was released, and he spoke plainly. (coughs) Now, I would guess that it's hard, it's difficult, for most of us here to imagine being deaf 
and then having the joy of hearing for the first time. So often we take things in life for granted, simple things like the ability to hear. I like to think that after this event, this man took nothing for granted anymore. He could now hear his friends, his family, his Savior. Not only could he hear, but we are told that he could talk plainly so that others could hear and understand him. And this is another example of our God going above and beyond the call of duty. Not only did this man receive hearing, but Jesus gave this man a voice. He could talk to others. He could share his thoughts and his needs and his wants and his ideas. He did not need a speech therapist. All he needed was Jesus. And Jesus was all too willing to set him free from his prison. Now, if you were in the Decapolis that day, if you were watching this event, would you have been amazed? You know, I often wonder if Jesus amazes people today. One thing is clear, the people who saw this event firsthand were amazed. Our text says that Jesus charged them to tell no one, but the more he charged them, the more zealously they proclaimed it. And they were astonished beyond measure, saying, He has done all things well. He even makes the deaf hear and the mute speak. You know, it's rather puzzling to read how Jesus responds after healing this man. Our text says again that he charges them to tell no one. You would think that Jesus would want everyone to know. You would think that he would want everyone to go out who has seen this event and tell others. This is not so. You see, Jesus was on a mission. His mission was not necessarily to restore this man's hearing and speech. He did that. But his mission was much broader than that. His mission was to save the world from everlasting condemnation. His mission was to restore sight and speech and health and life to all people. His mission was to give eternal drink to the thirsty and eternal food to the hungry. Jesus' mission was to restore creation back to what it originally was before sin entered and corrupted it. But our text says that the people could not remain quiet. They were so amazed by what they saw Jesus do that they blurted out, He has done all things well. Literally in the Greek, it reads, Good in everything He has done. Yet I often wonder, I often wonder how long their amazement lasted. Was there a point in time when that awe and that amazement wore off. What about us? The Greek word here for deaf can also be translated dull or blunt. What about us? Do we feel like we have heard these readings so often, time and time again in church, or in Sunday school, that we know Jesus so well that he is yesterday's news, that the Christian faith isn't relevant anymore, that we are too enlightened for that. You know, I think that a lot of people in our world think that way. I know a lot of young people see Christianity as grandma and grandpa's religion, and that it represents a bygone era. And churches struggle to keep the youth in the doors. But 
what we don't realize is that Christianity is relevant. Jesus Christ is relevant because Christ is the only Savior of the world. There is no other way to heaven. There is no other way to eternal life than through Jesus Christ. Now the question is, how are we, as people in the know, how are we going to communicate that message to a generation that has grown dull to Christianity? How are we going to pass on what has been passed on to us? In our text, Jesus tells the people not to say anything. But do they listen? No. Instead, they go and tell everyone. Why is it that when Jesus says, do not tell anyone, they go and tell everyone, yet when he, Jesus says, tell everyone, they remain quiet? It's kind of puzzling to me. As I stated before, there is a whole generation of people to whom Jesus has become dull. According to the Pew Research Group, one-fifth of, of the American population and one-third of adults under 30 are unaffiliated with a particular religion. I recently heard a, a term that described these people. They are the nons, N-O-N-E-S, the nons. The nons are the fastest-growing segment in our country. To them... Jesus Christ is not all that amazing anymore. As believers in Jesus Christ, we've got our work cut out for us because Jesus is not dull. All you have to do is open your Bibles and read about him. And maybe that's the problem. The further we get away from the Bible the less excited we become with Jesus. Conversely, the more involved we are with the Bible, that is, the more we read it, the more we study it, the more we hear it proclaimed, the more amazed and excited we become for our Lord. I think there's a direct relationship there. We must remain in God's Word because the Bible says by nature, we humans are no different than the man who was deaf and mute in our text. The Bible says that we are spiritually deaf and mute. We could not hear God's truth, nor could we clearly speak his praises. So the one who does all things well left his heavenly throne, and he came for us each and every one of us, including the nons. He came to a manger. He came to a cross in order to carry our sins. He came to a tomb to assure us that everything was all right with God. By his life and by his sacrifice, Jesus won for us and the entire world salvation. He came to us with this good news. And he said to us, Ephatha. And he opened our ears to hear the message of forgiveness, peace, joy, and love. In his Holy Supper today, Jesus comes to us yet again, and he touches our lips and gives us forgiveness and strength. And we hear his word. Be open, Ephatha, and our lips become unsealed as we consume his body and blood for the forgiveness of our sins. And as we then go out from this place, singing his praises and telling others, especially those who are unamazed by Jesus. There's no doubt about it, my friends. Jesus is amazing. 
His mercy and His power and His love leave us feeling overwhelmed. So overwhelmed that we blurt out, He does all things well. To know that a sinner like me stands completely forgiven before God each and every day of my life is no less amazing. To know that God's love will never fail. To know that He has won for us eternal life. To know that He has prepared a mansion for us in heaven. To know Jesus. To hear His word. To receive His body and blood. And to be able to sing His praises. It's truly amazing. Now, my friends, we have been empowered by God's word. Let us go out and proclaim that word to all people. Through words and actions, let us show others just how amazing Jesus is. Amen. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Our service continues now with the prayer of the church. Each petition will conclude with Lord in your mercy, to which a congregational response is here our prayer. Please stand for prayer. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Almighty God, Lord of heaven and earth, who keeps faith forever, grant us a living faith in your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Though sin and Satan would stop our hearts and ears, open them so that we hear your word of life and salvation, take it to heart, acknowledge your holy commands, speak plainly with joyful lips your word of truth, to all the world, and do the works of faith in daily life. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty God, our King, we pray for those who rule and govern us, the President, the legislature, and all who judge our laws. Grant justice in our land for for rich and poor alike. Unite our country and communities in godly, common common causes for for our well-being. Keep safe those whose lives are in danger because of their service, especially police, firefighters, and the military. Wherever our rulers or our laws are contrary to your will and truth, turn us from our errors. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty God and Father, your Son, our Shepherd, did all things well. We pray for his gospel to be proclaimed with might and power by your Holy Spirit, Season our daily speech with the truth of your grace and mercy and the redemption won for us in Christ Jesus. So also bless those who serve as pastors and all who are ordained to proclaim your gospel and administer your sacraments so that they may make known both your unyielding law and your precious gospel. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty God and Father, we give you thanks for having chosen to make the poor rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom. Even as our Lord Jesus showed no partiality, but welcomed the poor, the sick, the handicapped, and the marginalized, grant grace to your church, so that we do not neglect, but joyfully serve the needy. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty God and Father, you say to all with anxious hearts, be strong, fear not. You heal the sick, and defeated death by your resurrection. In your good time and according to your gracious will, heal the sick and comfort the suffering, especially we pray for Bob Hushka, Jean Barrett, Gail Dagenhart, Lori Hansen, Gary Hansen, Eleanor Siebert, Ken Holmes, Marge Krause, Sherry Carroll, Nancy Lembrick, Gail Reed, Art Skeel, Alice Walhub, Sandy Lawrence, Blaine Vance, Nathan Dorst, Pastor Paul Garfield, Eugene Filippi, Raylan Underwood, Bill Strong, 
William Felt, Lynette Wegman, Kensley May, Chuck Hayden, and James Spearbrecker. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our Almighty God and Father, the help of all who cry to you, be gracious to the poor, the unemployed, the underemployed, and all who suffer hunger, want, and need. Open the hearts of your people so that wherever there is abundance, we might share the blessings you give to us as stewards. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our Almighty God and Father, as your Son again provides his body and blood for the forgiveness of sins, give sincere faith in his word and promises to all who receive them, so that we commune with glad confidence. Lord, in your mercy. Father, into your hands we commend all for whom we pray. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our service continues now with the gathering of our tithes and our offerings and the signing of the Friendship Register booklets in your pews. Please be seated. Our service continues with the service of the sacrament on page 208. Please stand. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord. Holy Father, almighty and everlasting God, for the countless blessings you so freely bestow on us in all creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh and laid on him our sin, giving him into death that we might not die eternally. Because he is now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of all creation, for you have had mercy on us and have given your only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. In your righteous judgment you condemned the sin of Adam and Eve, who ate the forbidden fruit, and you justly barred them and all their children from the tree of life. Yet in your great mercy you promised salvation by a second Adam, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and made his cross a life-giving tree for all who trust in him. We give you thanks for the redemption you have prepared for us through Jesus Christ. Grant us your Holy Spirit, that we may faithfully eat and drink of the fruits of his cross and receive the blessings of forgiveness, life, and salvation that come to us in his body and blood. Hear us as we pray in his name and as he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. 
This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us pray. Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, you have given us a foretaste of the feast to come in the holy supper of your Son's body and blood. Keep us firm in the true faith throughout our days of pilgrimage, that on the day of his coming, we may together with all your saints celebrate the marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom, which has no end. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Our service concludes with hymn number 832. Please be seated.
Good morning once again. Good morning. And God's blessings to all of you, especially those visiting with us this morning. Uh, just a couple announcements uh, uh, that I want to highlight for you. Um, uh, tomorrow, um, the church office will be closed uh, in observance of Labor Day. Uh, so our church office will be closed tomorrow, but it will reopen then on Tuesday. Uh, Tuesday evening, we have elders and council meeting. Elders at 5.30 and council at 7 o'clock. Uh, then um, uh, Wednesday, you see LWML has an executive board meeting and then a general meeting. And then worship service. So our services switch from Monday evenings to Wednesday evenings uh, now until um, Memorial Day in the springtime. Um, also, just want to remind you that choir practice will start this Thursday at 6 o'clock uh, here at church. And then um, we'll see you all back here next Sunday for worship. Um, the youth group will start meeting also next Sunday as well.